Jupiter at first glance is perhaps the last place you would expect to find life. It's after all a roiling, hot gas giant. But it might surprise you that the gas giant itself has, at least in the past, been considered a possible home for life. And not just microbial life, but complex life. And while it's a long shot, it's not ruled out that something could inhabit the upper reaches of its atmosphere. Jupiter is a generally misunderstood world. It's usually thought of as a huge ball of gas. But in reality, it's much more complicated than that. If you descend into Jupiter's atmosphere, you will first find a turbulent upper layer made up of a mix of gases, mostly hydrogen and helium. The further you go down, the hotter it will get due to the high pressures of the interior. At about a thousand kilometers below the top of the cloud deck, you transition to one of the stranger natural substances thought to exist in our solar system. You would find metallic hydrogen. Under the extremely high pressures of Jupiter's atmosphere, hydrogen would be compressed into a soup of nuclei and electrons that exist in an ambiguous state that wouldn't have a clear boundary between a gas and a liquid. While metallic hydrogen is described as a liquid, it's a bit different than any other. It's better to think of the hydrogen as simply getting denser the deeper you go rather than use labels. Beyond that thick layer at the heart of the planet, it's thought you would find a core. Not a lot is known about this core, but it's probably made of rock and metal just like the inner planets. It's not yet known if it's solid or completely molten or some mix of the two. Planetary cores are generally hard to study and Jupiter's is among the hardest. But how could such an alien and strange environment such as Jupiter support any kind of life? The answer is in the conditions of the upper atmosphere. In 1976, Carl Sagan and Edwin Saltpeter released a paper citation in the description below in which they suggested that ammonia-based life of some kind might exist in the atmosphere of Jupiter. They envisioned three hypothetical kinds of animal that might live there, which they termed sinkers, floaters, and hunters. In particular, the floaters were envisioned as enormous gas bags, perhaps kilometers across and visible from orbit, that suspended themselves in the atmosphere using helium. Now we have never seen floaters with any of our probes to Jupiter, and this was a very speculative paper based on thinking derived from what we know of our own oceans and life there. No indications have ever surfaced that such a thing could really exist on Jupiter. But what does exist at Jupiter is the possibility of some interesting life-related chemistry. The chemicals in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter do include water, ammonia, and methane, along with plenty of hydrogen and gas form. These just happen to be the gases used in an interesting experiment done in 1952 by Stanley Miller and Harold Urey. They wanted to recreate the conditions of early Earth and see if they could produce the initial prebiotic chemical reactions that are believed to have ultimately led to the dawn of life on Earth. What they did was pass water vapor through a mix of hydrogen, ammonia, and methane gas. Then they subjected that mix to periodic electrical discharges intended to simulate lightning. Then they looked at what came out the other side, and it was, to say the least, interesting. They found lots of organic compounds coming out of the mix. Most importantly, they initially found a number of the amino acids that are used by life. In 2007, however, the original sealed samples from the experiment were re-examined, and as it turns out, all 20 of the amino acids used by life on Earth were present. Since then, numerous revisions have been made to the model of what our planet's early atmosphere was like. As a result, a number of subsequent experiments have been done based on the Miller-Urey work, ranging from changing the energy source to a volcano rather than lightning, adding in new chemical mixes that more accurately resemble what the early atmosphere is thought to have been like, and so on. The results of many of these experiments has been the creation of even more types of organic molecules than the Miller and Urey experiment produced. These experiments make it seem likely that at least the basic chemistry for life first arose on some volcanic island on Earth billions of years ago. For Jupiter, this would be a more difficult process, though it does have extremely powerful lightning and no shortage of heat. The problem is in its atmosphere, which is extremely violent. Gases circulate on that world by rising in certain areas and falling in others, and any kind of life, microbial included, would have to deal with impossibly high temperatures and pressures when circulating deep below. As Sagan noted in a segment on this topic in his television series Cosmos, such organisms would have to reproduce very rapidly, and while the prospect of life living in the atmosphere of Jupiter is somewhat of a stretch due to that roiling atmosphere, there may be gas giants and even brown dwarves in the universe calm enough to harbor at least some form of microbial life in their upper atmosphere, or possibly even more. 
In a paper by Jack Yates and his colleagues at the University of Edinburgh from late 2016, link in the description below, they detail a hypothetical way for brown dwarves to harbor some form of life. They note that the upper atmospheres of some brown dwarves might harbor climate conditions with pressures and temperatures similar to Earth. Relying on updrafts, life might exist in the zone within the brown dwarves. This opens up vast new territory in the search for life in the universe. In 2013, a brown dwarf known as WISE 0855-0714 was discovered and seemingly has water-based clouds floating in its upper atmosphere. Using Sagan and Saltpeter's research, they applied that thinking to the brown dwarf and concluded that yes, life might exist there. The James Webb Space Telescope is slated to take an in-depth look at close brown dwarfs such as WISE 0855-0714, which is only 7 light years away. And while it's hard to envision native life having a way to evolve in the first place in a place like Jupiter or a brown dwarf, it's been suggested that dust floating in the atmosphere might do the trick for a solid place to do it, or even microbial life being delivered by an asteroid through panspermia. One can imagine that this kind of inhabited gas planet might be quite rare, but it does seem to at least be hypothetically possible, and that in the future, when we do detect evidence of life, perhaps it might come from the spectra of a brown dwarf's atmosphere. But I'm left with one lingering, highly speculative thought after making this video. If Jupiter, then why not Saturn? Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently probably sounding a bit scratchy because it's spring and my allergies are working overtime, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.